Hi there, you're in the lab with your mate JJ. Today is mail call, very quick mail call today. Uh, in fact, I almost wasn't even going to record this video. Um, I had some equipment arrive from Amazon today, um, and it's two variations on a theme. I'm trying to get 5.1 surround sound working on my new uh, gaming rig. So you might have seen the other day, I got myself a new computer for playing games on. Um, and uh, it didn't come with 5.1 surround sound, it just had stereo sound card. So um, the first thing I did was actually buy uh, a USB device uh, for cheap from Amazon. It arrived the other day and when I plugged it in I just couldn't make it work. I did try pretty hard to get it to work properly and it just wouldn't. Um, I'll put the details in the show notes for this video if you want to see the one that I didn't have any luck with. Um, it presented as a USB device and it worked as a stereo device, but I just wasn't able to make it work um, as a 5.1 surround sound. Um, and I, uh, I did give it a fairly good go and I did use the specific drivers that were recommended and there was no real problem that I could see with the installation of the drivers. So as near as I could tell, the correct drivers were installed and it still wasn't presenting as a 5.1 surround sound device, just a USB stereo device. So what's in the, um, in the, in the Amazon um, envelope today is two alternatives. Um, I got a USB alternative and I got a PCIe alternative. So um, I'm gonna try the USB one, um, and if that works well and good, otherwise I'll install the PCIe one, and hopefully that'll work as a backup. So um, that's what I'm gonna be showing you here. Also in the show notes, I'll link through to the actual equipment um, that, I, uh, <coughs> that I purchased, and I guess, um, I'll, uh, I'll let you know in this video how much success I have doing the install of this equipment. So um, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll take it out of the box together, I'll stick it in the computer and test it, and then I'll let you know how we, how we fared. So uh, let's jump over to the bench and have a look at what's arrived in the mail. Here on the bench, and uh, here's our package from Amazon. So let's just... Uh, Pop this open. Hmm. All right. Now, I sort of like the look of both of these bits of equipment. This is from Asus, uh, or Asus, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I love these guys, I buy their stuff all the time, it's my go-to brand. Um, and then StarTech, I have some stuff from StarTech as well. So, uh, this is 7.1, I only need it for 5.1. This is the USB uh, one, and then this one, as you can see here, that's the PCIe one. So. We're gonna try, I think, with the StarTech one. Um, and if it works, then we're done. And I'll keep this for a rainy day. Um, if this doesn't work, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the trouble of installing this. Obviously, the USB one's easier to install. Um, I might as well um, unbox these things together with you, though. We can have a look at them uh, in case anyone's particularly interested in what comes in the box. So this is uh, StarTech.com, hard to find, made easy. There we go. 7.1 USB external sound card with SPDIF uh, digital audio. I won't be using the SPDIF. Uh, turn your laptop or desktop computer into a 7.1 channel home theater ready sound system. Okay. And on the back, uh, it doesn't really add anything extra, does it? Not really. Now, StarTech. Ah, London. Ah. Oh, they've got uh, 
they've, they're global global company and they've got um, offices all around the world there you go good work StarTech now it says attention observe precautions for handling electrostatic sensitive devices huh. This is uh, this is the equipment. We've got volume plus and minus, mic mute and volume mute. We've got uh, SPDIF in and SPDIF out. We've got USB B type B cable there. That'll be the input. Um, okay, we've got. Uh, stereo uh, microphone or just a mono microphone and then we've got 5.1 surround sound front rear speaker there we go so that's uh, and it can you can do uh, 7.1 as well we won't be using it for that so um, let's have a look here okay we've got a little USB cable very nice now I do believe this is just a uh, USB 2 so there, there's not an, uh, any uh, really particularly high bandwidth requirements for, uh, for audio so uh, USB 2 ought to do it um, there we go that's uh, type A to type B which is exactly what we need Ah, and there's some driver installation. Okay, good. I um I have an external uh, CD-ROM, so I can uh, I can I can use that to to read this. Ah, and this is a fairly decent looking uh, um, manual. Let's have a look at this together. So it just says the same thing on the uh, manual as it said on the box. Okay, there's some compliance statements. Uh, then we've got uh, safety measures. Uh, warning statements. Table of contents. Product diagram. Okay, we've got headphones. Line in. front, surround, center, base, and we've got uh, SPDIF in, SPDIF out, and USB B port, and there's uh, a, a stereo uh, microphone support, uh, package contents, USB audio adapter, USB A to B cable, software CD, user manual one. Requirements for the latest product information, technical specifications, manuals, and declarations of conformers, please visit StarTech.com. And it requires a host computable computer with an available USB A port. Installation, driver and software installation. Plug the audio adapter into an available USB A port. Download the driver package from StarTech.com slash IC. USB audio 7D. Extract the files. Navigate to the folder with the extracted files. Run the setup file located in the root folder. This will install the driver for the audio adapter and the XEAR audio center application. Note for full product functionality, the XEAR audio center application needs to be installed. All right. Connecting an audio output device. Audio receiver or speakers with optical input. Connect a Toslink cable from an audio receiver or set of speakers to the SPDIF out port on the audio adapter. Notes the SPDIF out LED is not enabled by default. To activate the port, refer to the changing the output device section. Proper surround sound playback from the SPDIF out port will often require DRM compatible playback software. We recommend using the 
Netflix, Disney Plus, etc. applications from the Microsoft Store to ensure the sound is played back properly. If you're using a Blu-ray drive on your PC, we re recommend using the included software it came with. Only one audio input device can be connected to the audio adapter at one time. Headphones. Connect the 3.5mm audio cable on a set of headphones to the headphones port on the audio adapter. Notes. The headphone port is not enabled by default. To activate the port, refer to the Changing the Output Device section. We recommend turning off your speakers when using headphones. Otherwise, sound will play from the speakers as well as the headphones. Front speaker. Connect an audio cable to the front port on the audio adapter and the other end to an external amplifier. Surround speaker. Connect an audio cable to the surround port on the audio adapter and the other end to an external amplifier while in either 4, 6 or 8 channel mode. Center slash bass speaker. Connect an audio cable to the center slash back port on the audio adapter and the other end to an external amplifier while in either 6 or 8 channel mode. <clears throat> Rear speaker. Connect an audio cable to the Back, back out port on the audio adapter and the other end to an internal amplifier while in the 8 channel mode. Okay, cool. Um, connecting an audio input device. Uh, microphone 1 in. Connect the audio cable to a microphone to the mic 1 port on the audio adapter. Right channel only. Then mic 2 for the left channel. There's a line in. Uh, for output mixing or recording, uh, SPDIF in which we won't be using, but it does say connect a Toslink cable to the SPDIF in port on the audio adapter on the other end to the digital optical output port on the audio device. Notes the audio signal only passes through to the SPDIF output. The SPDIF in port on the audio adapter supports two channel audio but does not support 5.1 or 5 uh, or 7.1 audio. Operation. Uh, changing the output device. Note, for more information on the settings and features of the XEAR Audio Center, please review the software user manual including in the driver package. <coughs> Connect the audio adapter to a USB port on the computer. In Windows, set the default playback device to USB sound device. Launch the XEAR Audio Center application using the shortcut on the desktop. In the left columns, click on the speakers and select speaker settings. See figure one. Note any further changes will require right clicking on the current output device. In the drop down list, choose between SPDIF, out, speaker or headphone. Note changing the output, the audio output will take a few seconds. The icon for the active output device will become highlighted. And there's a screenshot of the uh, of the speaker settings. Okay. Uh, push button controls and LEDs. Okay. The button LED. So there's a uh, volume mute. Press this button to mute the audio outputs. Mic mute. Press this button to mute the microphone. Volume up and down. Microphone mute LED, uh, power activity LED. The light will be on when the audio device is powered. The light will blink when activity is detected. Then there's some warranty information. Two year warranty and a limitation of liability and some contact information in the back. So I'm just gonna um, take this guy over to the thing. Um, I don't think I'll uh, use this CD. It did say that you could download it. so. I'll, I'll go to the instructions here and I'll download the latest because this might not be the latest and um, and then we'll see how we go so I'll be back to reporting in just a second and then after that's done we can have a look in this box uh, we'll know if we need to uh, actually use it or not uh, depending on the results of this so wish me luck here I go I'm back and I'm pleased to report it worked so um, uh, that's really good. I, I tested it on uh, Doom 3. It also came with a, a utility um, and uh, I, I, I should mention um, uh, this is the device that I had 
um, which wasn't working. Um, and it came with this, um, uh, like, um, burned, this is, this is a, 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 a compact disc recordable. So it came with this recordable, um, uh, driver software, um, which I've just taped to the top of it. Um, but it turns out that this StarTech equipment used exactly the same uh, C Media devices. So I'll, I'll link through um, in the show notes to this and this, but they're, um, that, that the software was basically the same. So I think uh, I might have been able to get this to work now because I learned more about how this software worked. Anyway, I'm not really sure, but um, it did seem like C Media, uh, a Taiwanese company, uh, are, are responsible for the software for both of these things. So I'm not sure why this one worked and this one didn't work. I don't really know. But uh, yes, I'm very happy to report that I did have success. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the notes and the links in the show notes. Um, and just before we wrap up now, I thought I'd um, <coughs> show you the, uh, the other... Uh, option that I got I'm just going to put this in the um, in the drawer for a rainy day because I don't need to install it if I wanted to install this obviously I'd have to take the uh, side off the computer and then find a, a, a spare slot in the back and uh, I don't want to go to all of that trouble uh, since I've got a USB solution which seems to be working just fine but um, just for the sake of it I'll, I'll show you what this one is um, uh, just in case you're interested uh, yourself. So this is uh, ASUS in search of incredible. This is the Zonar SE PCIe 5.1 gaming sound card. So I'm not sure what version of PCIe it uh, it is. Uh, there we go. Anything from version 1 or above. Um, immersive audio optimized for gaming. 192 kilohertz, 24 bit, 5.1 channel playback, 300 ohm headphone amp for enhanced bass and clear detailed sound, high fidelity immersive sound with a 116 decibel signal to noise ratio. <coughs> so we've got mic in, uh, front, side, center, and digital out. Cool. Oh, okay, they've got some. Uh, ASUS exclusive sound insulation technology. Exclusive hyper grounding technology ensures effective noise blocking and reduced audio distortion and crossover interference. So uh, there you go, handy audio controls. Zonar Audio Center software provides a user-friendly experience via an inviting and intuitive interface. I have to say this interface looks a little bit more polished than the one that uh, the other uh, thing came with. Fair enough. And the specification, the signal to noise ratio is 116 dB uh, decibels, that is. Um, THD plus N, total harmonic distortion plus noise, 0.00251%. Frequency response, 10 hertz to 87 kilohertz. Sample rate and resolution, up to 192 kilohertz at 16 or 24 bit. Bus compatibility, as we said before, PCIe 1.0 or above, and a headphone amplifier impedance, 300 ohms. So let's um, let's just uh, pop this open. Let's see what's in the box. So uh, there he is, just the standard PCIe adapter and then we've got uh, the small bracket, looks like a fairly comprehensive, oh okay, okay this is just the warranty, there you go, it's a monster and uh, safety information, there we go. Oh, there's a couple of loose screws in here. I'll just put them in a... Um...
in a little baggie. I've got a little baggie here, and there's the screws that fell out. Do you see those? I'm just going to put them in the bag so they don't get lost. All right. Now, what's this telling us? Oh, it's a great big fold-out one. All right. Well, system requirements. Uh, to ensure a successful installation of the Zona SE audio card, your computer must meet the following requirements. One PCIe 1.0 or higher compatible slot for the audio card. Microsoft Windows 10, 8, and 7. doesn't mention Windows 11, which is what I'm running. Uh, Intel Pentium uh, 4, 1.4 GHz, or AMD Athlon uh, CPU, or faster. Uh, 1 gig or above of RAM. 300 meg available hard drive space. High quality headphones or powered analog speakers to enjoy the ultra high fidelity sound of the card. There we go. Now what's number six there? Ah, oh, front panel audio header. Very good, so you can actually connect that to the front panel. Great. Okay. So it just shows you how to wire in your various devices. And then there's a whole lot of uh, translated stuff on the back. This is the hardware features in other other languages. On the back, all right, just shows you how to wire up your various uh, speaker options. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to put this in the um, in in the cupboard uh, in case I want it on a rainy day. Uh, I guess I could return it to Amazon as well. Um, so I'll think about that. All right. Well, I'll throw you over to the farewell cam and we'll wrap up. And that's a wrap. So, um, yeah, as I as I showed you, this is the uh, the um, PCIe uh, uh, five point one surround sound. Uh, system that I've got. Um, I'm just going to keep that spare. And then there's uh, this one, um, which is the one that I couldn't get working. Um, uh, so I'll, 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 I'll link you to that as well. I, I bought this from Amazon. It was cheap. Um, and then and then there's the StarTech one, which um, has uh, this manual, this CD, um, and and the box that it came in. That's all hooked up to my computer, which is down there um, and it's all working um, uh, properly so that's great I tested it in Doom 3 I had to go into the settings and choose surround sound um, and then when I did that it all seemed to be working if I interacted with the character and turn around I could hear them on this side so uh, yeah that was pretty cool so um, that concludes this video I hope you enjoyed this video thanks very much for watching and please remember to hit like and subscribe